Hi everyone, Bill Sheridan with the Maryland Association of CPAs. I've got a quick question for you. Suppose you were ready to take your firm in a certain direction, and in order to get there, you had to fire more than half of your current clients. Would you have the guts to make that decision? I ran into a guy recently who actually did. His name is Michael Sue. He runs an outfit called Deep Sky Accounting. It's based in California. And I ran into him at the uh, AICPA's Tech Plus Conference and Practitioner Symposium in Las Vegas. And he actually did that a couple of years ago. Uh, and I, I was fascinated by his story. So I sat down and asked him to tell us a little bit about why he reached that decision, uh, the fear that was involved with making that decision, and what the outcome has been. Where, where is he now and, and how things have been going? And I, I, I thought the, the story was fascinating and, and wanted you to hear it. So a quick interview with Michael Sue from Deep Sky Accounting. Let's so take a listen. In, in 2010, I, I went to the Verisage conference and... That's when I sort of got what Ron Baker calls the Verisage headache, and and I and I sat. I was sitting in that conference room and I'm thinking, I've 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 gotten all wrong. You know, I've I've done it all wrong. And and this was literally a year, a little bit more than a year after I started my company. And what I had realized that I was doing wrong was I was doing fixed pricing. I wasn't doing value pricing. I was doing fixed fee, and I wasn't doing value pricing. So. The, the realization was that even though when I created the company, I understood that I didn't want to bill by the hour. I understood that I didn't want to um, do a timesheet and I was having this fixed engagement prices, but I was guessing. That's what I was doing. I was guessing about um, really how many hours it's going to take, what is my you know DNI, and then this is the price. What, what I should have been doing was understanding the customer even more and then... And then um, and then price based on based on their value based on the value that we're creating. So so what I had did was you know I, I I went back and then I went to the airport and I was sitting there and I decided that in order for me to to run my business to to take my business where I want to take it I will have to lose a lot of my customer which just plainly plain was it wasn't a good fit and it wasn't going to fit in the sense that we may we're not creating as much value as we want you know that the customer that came to us and said we don't care about you know accounting we don't care about business insights we just want bookkeeping as cheap as possible and we said yes to that because when we started we have more more time than money so so i and even though it looks like a good revenue stream and another thing that that i have learned is bad customer drives out good customer. And that was super important. That was super important for me to finally understand. It's, it's not that I have 10 customer and sure we have three bad ones, but we have seven great ones. It's that these three bad customers are toxic to my company in a way that my staff morale is lower. We're, we're so focused on putting out fire for them that we're not, we're actually, um, it's, it's impeding our, our ability to serve the other seven good customer. And it's really making us, you know, not that, not that great of a company. So in order to do that, we had to really make um, a hard decision to, to cut nearly 40% of, of our customer. As soon as we cut, obviously our top line is down um, 40%. Well, it, the, the top line wasn't down exactly 40% because they were, they were, you know, smaller customer. They weren't paying us as much, but it was it was a huge hit. And as, actually, the second part of that story is we spent the next two weeks to review more customers um, with the team and got more understanding. And a lot of it's learning about who we are, what 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 are we trying to do here, and we we got rid of another 20% in the, in the next in the next you know two weeks to a month or so. And, and it was hard, it was hard. It, it's like we started a brand new company. It's like, okay, we, we, we battled uphill for one year and now finally we're comfortable. We're not, we're not making a ton of money, but we're comfortable. And all of a sudden we decide, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna turn away my revenue. I just, I, I don't wanna make money anymore. So it was super tough. And, and in fact, I, I had to, I, I, made, I made a motion I, I didn't take a salary. I didn't take, I didn't take a salary for two years. And, and um, it's, it's difficult. And there are just days, and, and it's, it's, like devil, it's like the devil was testing me, right? As soon as I made that decision, I get my phone is ringing off the hook, and people are saying, hey, would you do this for me? Would you do that for me? And I have to say no. And it's extremely hard to say no, but thankfully I have you know, a ton of friends and mentors and family that were able to sort of cheer me on and say, hey, you have to stick to this. It's the concept of bullseye. You know, in the long run, it's going to be better. Like, it's not, there's nothing sexy and cool about firing your clients, right? It's, it's tough. 
But in the long run, a year later, fast forward a year later, um, we're, we're at the same revenue. Um, then, then, you know, so we fire our customer in January, so our December revenue is the same a year later. But our profit, I mean, for the first time we saw profit. And it was just, re it was just amazing. And we literally handle um, today in 2012, I mean, three, two, two years later, um, we have a third of our customer. The, the you know, number of customer is a third. Revenue is, well, revenue this year is more and profitability is, is there. I think the big lesson that I learned was I, you have to understand or I have to understand what business I am in. You know, what am I trying to create here? Because every business is built to create value, right? So what kind of, what's my value proposition? What is my business? And, and you really have to understand that in order to focus um, time and money. You know, another one of my good friend and entrepreneur as well, she tells me, the, that's, that's, that's your business, time and money. And the only way you can really um, focus and grow your business is to understand that once you, once you know who you are, know what you do, what you do, know who you're serving, then you can really re utilize those two time and money resources because it's like decision is always being filtered. Someone comes to you and say, hey, would you, would you go to this event? And the question is, you know, is my customer gonna be there? Or will this get me closer to my vision? Or would this help me, help me with my business? And once you can filter those, then you can grow your business. You know, Steve Jobs says the best, what he's most proud of at Apple is not what they did, it's what they choose not to do. So it just it puts, puts your company in that laser focus mode where you know it's it's like you align your cut you align your team you align the owners and you align really your customer and everybody it defines you it, it defines who you are and, def and makes you different makes you different and really help your business grow